shouts of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my Sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! How great thou art! How great thou art!
the management and staff of K. Allen & Sons Funeral Directors Limited, and from my family to yours, please accept our condolences. Please accept our sympathy. If you would be kind enough to bow your hearts with me for a moment, please let's pray. Father, this morning we come into this space not wanting to be here, not wanting to be in this situation, but it has been forced upon us. We come into this space this morning, Father, while we are thankful to be alive, it's also painful to be alive. We come into this space today with longing in our hearts. We come into this space today wanting answers, wanting change, wanting a reversal of these circumstances, if possible. We come into this space, Father God, grieved and broken, empty, and in severe heartache. And while we are thankful for you giving us a new day in which to live, we are in need of your grace, we are in need of your help to make it through this day, to face this challenge of this day. We are in need of your grace to sustain us, we are in need of your peace to keep our hearts whether we're in this building or somewhere else joining with those who are in this building. As members of this family, relatives, neighbors, friends, and as citizens of this nation, God, we grieve today. Our hearts break. And so we lift our hearts to you this morning that you would come and you would sit by us. You would stand by us. And you'd walk with us through this season of our lives. We ask that you would give the necessary help today, Father. You'd show yourself graceful, gracious, and strong on our behalf. Bind up every broken heart, we pray. And speak into our lives today. Help us to not leave this place the same way we came in. But the weak would leave strong. The broken would leave encouraged. The confused would leave with clarity. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We have a very unique situation today in terms of how we're going to get this service done. And so I ask you to bear with us as we go through our steps today and be very, very, very patient with us. There's a song not on our list at all. I want to ask Kadisha to play for us in the arms of the angel. And um, we will continue thereafter. If you need to cry during this service, feel free. If you need to scream during this service, feel free. If you need to get up and move from where you are during this service, feel free. Nobody needs to be strong for anybody in here today. And please, whatever you do, don't try to hold whatever grief you feel inside, let it out, let it go.
The song was written by Sarah McLachlan. And she, many people have had many thoughts about what this song is all about. But Sarah writes why she wrote this song. What caused her to write this song. She said, I wrote this song, Angel, which is the actual name of the song. After being on the road for almost two years straight and was both mentally and physically drained. I went to a cottage north of Montreal to relax and write. I read on arrival in Rolling Stone magazine about the death of the keyboard player for Smashing Pumpkins who had overdosed in a hotel room. The story shook me. Because though I have never done hard drugs like that, I felt a flood of empathy for him. And that feeling of being lost, lonely, and desperately searching for some, some kind of release. I wrote this song in two days. No doubt, if not all of you, many of you would be feeling like that today. Lonely, lost, the need for release, the need for comfort. Not sure where to find it. Not sure how to find it. And she sat and she wrote that song, trying to find that sense of peace that she so longed for. And therefore, she spoke about being in the arms of the angels. The idea of a mother holding her baby, a grandmother holding her grandchild. To comfort, to soothe, whether because of hunger or because of some hurt. And to try to bring a sense of quietness to the heart. We spend our lives searching for that. We try everything we could. We dig here and we dig there and we run wild trying to find peace. Trying to find a comfort that would last through the good as well as the bad times. And it eludes us. It keeps running away from us. 
Sometimes it looks as though we're getting close, and just as we're about to grab it, it slips away. We find ourselves repeatedly in the same space, scrambling for comfort, scrambling for release, scrambling for peace. Jesus would say, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you that peace that you look for. And that peace is not found in the absence of trouble. It's not found in the absence of problems. It is found despite the problems, despite the trouble, despite the turmoil all around us. Keep that in your minds as we go ahead this morning. I want to call on Nolene Hackshaw at this time to come and give us the eulogy for Jamal. Come and do what only you can do for the grieving hearts. No words can express the tremendous grief which lingered due to the unfortunate passing of our beloved sons, grandsons, nephews, cousins, godchildren, and friends before God called them home. We are here today to celebrate the lives and the cherished memories we have left of their journey on this stage with us. Jamal, a.k.a. Wani, jaunty and witty, but boy, he loved his belly. For food, he had no pity. Either he bust a pot or he sent by one away. Andre, a.k.a. Maggie, authentic and me, always skinning his feet. And when he going to school, from head to toe, you sure he need. Karen, a.k.a. Big Man, Boisterous and moody, always hustling for him money. But boy, he could argue with somebody. How to calm him down? Just say we have a gun at a gun. They each had different personalities, but a gentle side we would all fall for. They will be greatly missed in their unique way, but will forever be in our hearts where no harm can be done and we can be graced by their memory until we meet again. So Wani, Wandan, Fetty, you're cooking for the master now. Maggie, aka Magnet, and Want It, you're smiling on the lap of the maker now. Big Man, aka Bix, you're hunting in heaven from now. So this is goodbye because the role was called up yonder.
from the time when I held you in my arms to the day when I saw you all for your first day of school. Today I am holding the beautiful memories that have made me the person I am today. We are all gathered here to celebrate the life of my brother, Karen Nigel Madu. Karen was raised from humble beginnings. He was the second of my mother's five children. Many describe him in his early years as outgoing and adventurous. So, so much he was given the alias Big Man. Karen loved fishing, hunting, and football so much. Oftentimes, he would sweat with his brother and cousins, Kevon, Maggie, Antonio, Jeremy, Kareem, Shaquille, Jamal, and others from the community. Whatever fruits were in season, he'll always make a chow with plenty pepper. Growing up, I saw how much my siblings love each other. Despite difficult times, every Christmas we were always we were always there for each other to have a good time. He loved both his parents unconditionally and his twin brother Kevon. They were inseparable. My brother lived a short but good life. <laughs> he will always be loved and cherished by many. Big man, I know this will be the last time I'll ever see your face again. But, but know that we will miss you and we will never forget you. I wish I could hold you one last time and hear your voice calling me Pinky again. <laughs> I will hold on to the fun times that we shared. <laughs> I will find peace in my heart to forgive those that have hurt you. <laughs> but just remember, brother, that I'll always love you. I think it's obvious that we have a cross section of people here. We're celebrating three lives that were tightly interconnected. And you all are interconnected as well. I would like to take this moment to make the podium, make the mic available to one or two persons who would like to come and pay a tribute to Jamal at this time. When they just spread them out one by one. So if anybody would like to come and pay a tribute to Jamal, please feel free to come at this time. This is not for Jamal, no? These three, these three fellas here, this one is my godson. This is his brother. This is a cousin. They call me Uncle Fault. They treat me like if I is the blood. This is my little child here. Because I didn't have no children until five years ago. And I used to treat him like my son, Maggie. Jamal give me mango. Every time I come, big boy, always ask my uncle Fowler how you're going, always. These three youths was love fellas. Too soon to go. Maggie, you made the biggest hug of my life. No woman never give me that. 
I will swear on that. Every Christmas, hold me tight. When my son born, Jamal, look him there. Always bring mangoes to him. Big man, diamond, there is nothing and he treat me with love, always. And I will never forget all you, believe me. No day. Thanks. Um, pleasant morning to everyone. Um, I am the older sister for Jamal. A lot of the family members may not know me because, well, I'm his sister on his dad's side. But um, I remember the first time I saw Jamal, he was eight years old, and it was on a Father's Day special that they had at the prison for us to see our father. It was Jamal and Shaquille. And I remember my sister and I, when we got on the bus to get to the location, it was like, but who's these two little boys and why does he know who we? And when we finally got there, they have all the dads who are serving time in the prison sitting at these long tables with empty chairs for the children. And usually, Pinky and I will be the first one to run up and hug our father and Jamal and Shaquille beat with the punch and we saw they were like, but who is them? How them just run up on the man? So who is all they come from? And in that moment when my dad, you know, came out and he was like, this is your younger brothers, I genuinely felt happy because, I mean, if anybody knows my dad, he has a lot of children. And a lot of us were not fortunate to meet each other. And from since that time to now, knowing them, it's like I've known them since they were babies. I don't know if that's the, the connection that we would have formed or the memory that we would have made that day at the prison, but from since then, it was always here. I have two new brothers now, Jamal and Shaquille. They added on to the list of 20-something children. I don't know where it is. But one thing I want to share with the parents here and other families is that sibling love is important. And I want to encourage everyone to like hold on to your brother, hold on to your sister, because now that I am in this position, thinking back, I'm like, I would have only known him from eight years till now. So that would have been eight years I missed out on. So I, I don't know what he would have been like as a child. I don't know what his favorite song would have been. I don't know what his favorite game would have been. So now I have to play catch up or I have to find out. So I just want to encourage everyone to, to hold on to your sister, hold on to your brother, even though you may bicker because when I found out the news of this, I would have never think is Jamal. I just heard on the news three young men were, and I was like, that's not making sense. It's, it's young men. They weren't doing anything wrong, just three young men. You know, and to then find out two hours later, it was your brother. It was real heartbreaking. So I just want to encourage everyone to keep the love, especially between sibling relationships. Hi, good day. Good day, Martin. So, my name is McKenna. For all who don't know me, I is Jamal Princess for five years now, right? And I just want to come and say I love him so much. And his granny and his mommy raised such a good boy. Like, such a good boy. Like, the man's soul, so pure. And this real sad, like this real sad, like this ridiculous, honestly. And 
I know this real sad and everybody gonna miss all three in them, but we just have to remember that he here with us, all in them here with us. Just because they went like that don't mean they gone. They here with us. Still. And they're just three young men to just love. They still just love. Like they're such pure souls. Such beautiful souls. For nobody that don't know him, know all of them personally. Like, all the shit I get to know them personally. Like, it's such, i so glad. Because me and this man rocking since Form 2. We in things since Form 2. When I get a call that this happened, I was in shambles. Tears. Can't even say tears. It was worse than that. So I can't even imagine for the people and for the people and them who raised him. Loving him and getting to know him specifically because it was always me and him. Getting to know him and loving him was the best. Best five years of my entire life. The best decision I ever make. And I am very sorry for everybody lost and for my loss. And it was really the best. The man was really the best. Thank you. My name is Nicole. I have one of the aunt of all three. I just want to do a reading from the book of Ecclesiastics. <laughs> a good name is better than fine perfume, and the day of death better than the day of birth. It is better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting, for death is the destiny of everyone. The living should take this to heart. Frustration is better than laughter because a sad face is good for the heart. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of the fools is in the house of pleasure. It is better to heed the rebuke of a wise person than to listen to the song of fools. Like the crackling of thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of fools. This too is meaningless. Extortion turns a wise person into a fool and a bribe corrupts the heart. The end of a matter is better than its beginning, and patience is better than pride. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. Wisdom, like an inheritance, is a good thing, and benefits those who see the sun. Wisdom is a shelter, as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is in this, is this. Wisdom preserves those who have it. Consider what God has done. Who can strengthen what he has made crooked? When times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider this. God has made the one as well as the other. Therefore, no one can discover anything about your future. In this meaningless life of mine, I have seen both of these. Proverbs chapter 1 and then we're going to Okay, so Samantha spoke a while ago. Nolene came. Nolene, you have to come back and speak on behalf of Andre. Where's Nolene?
No. All right. You all ready? All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Afia. Um, I won't even say them as my cousins. Them is like my brothers. See, Maggie, Wani, and Big Man. I really love them. I remember that time Jama sent me the shop for a phone card for him. But I go in the shop, I was very tired. Eh? But I come back like him hey, now. Nah. When I come back, I drop the phone card for him. Hey, you, but he told me he gave me a file to go to the shop. When I come back here, yeah, he now, um, I take too long. Go from here, I can't get no file. I don't understand. Big man. He and his brother at the time, my mother gone out. He and his brother, and me and Anja, homely. Um, them choked me and Anja under the bed and beat his broomstick under the bed. I don't understand. Maggie and Anja tie me up and carry me by ace. And, hmm, boy, that was the boys. I end up having to run out all on the bus shit. Them, I had the best memories of them. I remember when cousin Shaquille, he and um, big man and small man used to go hunting. And when they come back, them not afraid to go on. They used to run me down with the gun. If you see how I used to be running and crying, eh? hmm. I had the best memories of them, especially Jamal. Every time this boy see me, always has something to tell me about how I look good. Nobody was never look good enough for him. Um, I go on by my aunt in the morning. That was this, this Sunday morning before the die. But I had my bonnet on my head. I go by my aunt. When I'm coming back now, he telling um, Kayla, look at this piper, come in here, look at this piper. <laughs> well, I tell him, keep all that small talk, I'm paying in the pocket for somebody else. Hmm, them, hmm. I had the best memories of them, especially Maggie. Remember when I had paint the beads in my hair with the braids? Maggie come, be playing, the boy pull out all my beads in him. All, I just pelt him with the bucket, I shot him, you know, kind of thing. They had the best memories together, I really love three in them. She and them, I'm sure if Jamal was here, he would have told me something out of time. And <laughs> Big man, you know, that's a girl, we're going out with you, girl. Come down from there now. <laughs> no matter what kind of, hmm, we used to do everything together, especially Maggie. Me and Maggie was like this. Big man, he used to be a little moody, but the night before he died, if you see, I used to, I used to do real shippiness in a hole. I showed Big Man how to talk to a girl. I said, Big, say, can't walk up to the girl and tell she called him again. And I said, Big, have to walk up to she, good afternoon. My mother was ready, and I was singing and thing. I said, that shippiness I was doing, it was be real good for them. I had the best memories of them. Proverbs 1, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father, and forsake not the law of your mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto your head, and chains about your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us. Come, let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Refrain your foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They look privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which takes away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse. 
in the openings of the gates in the city she utters her words saying how long you simple ones will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge turn you at my reproof behold i will pour out my spirit upon you unto you i will make known my words unto you because i have called and you refuse i have stretched out my hand and no man regarded but you have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. When your fear comes as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish comes upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hate for they for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would not of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkens unto me, as wisdom speaking, shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Hi, good day, everyone. Um, my name is Tineel Rodney. I am a fellow friend of the three boys and also Nyla and Naomi and the rest of family, right? Um, I never thought this day would have come so soon. I knew it would have come, but not so soon. With these three boys, even if you're going through the worst, once you are wrong them, and they are in a good mood and they are not vexed, you would come out of that bad mood. I remember I had a time in school. I, come, I came to school and, because we went to school in primary school, right? And I came there and Andrew Watchman, he was like, going on with you, dog, you know, that way. And I was like, well, I'm just not feeling it today. And it had no teacher that day that was teaching us that day. It had a PTA meeting, right? And we started to, he started to beat drums. And it was a whole rhythm, it was a whole vibe. You understand? And that just light up my day because I was deep, I was deep, I was going through something, right? Basically, what I would like to say is that the last time we was really talking was approximately two weeks ago. Yeah. We finished standard five together and left. This is Andre. We hardly used to talk. I'm in Form 5 now, so we're supposed to finish school now, but, you know. <sighs> we were making plans to go places and do things, because these boys were ambitious boys. When I got the news after four Sunday af afternoon, right, I was at a football game, and I am in this group where it's to, to tell you, like, all the murders and everything that happening. And they were like, a murder happened in Darby. Four, four persons got shot. That's what they said. And when I check, because I know these boys living in Darby, I was like, tell me who the persons is. And when I saw two photos came in, I was traumatized instantly because I, I had to actually talk to these boys at a point. I was so busy. I was always... To be honest, ducking them when it comes to like Lyman, take, take, take. I always busy, always have something to do, always have a football match to go to, always have something to do. But today I make time and actually present myself here. I really could not let today pass and do be here. Because if I didn't come here today, I'd feel like I'd never be able to be okay with myself, if you understand what I'm saying. But these three boys, they were nothing but unconditional love. When you were around them, you would feel loved. It's a vibe. It's always something positive. It's, it's like you can, never be, you can never feel alone. And if you get the three of them at the same time, hmm, you'll be the most happiest person. But it's so sad that we come to this point and stop at this point. It's really so sad. Now, I know my question to myself is, 
when I go into stuff, I need somebody to comfort me or need somebody to send me a voice note to church to just lighten up my whole day. Who would I call? Who would I talk to? But on these boys' behalf, they were nothing but love and happiness. That's all I have to say about, yeah. Thank you all. So if anybody wants to come and share your hearts concerning Andre and Karen or any of these three or all three of them still, please feel free to come if anybody else would like to do so. Teacher, coach, neighbor, friend, classmate, Think somebody's coming? No, no, nobody. One buddy. Good evening, everybody. Um, Andre friend from school, my name's Teresa. I've known Andre a very long time. It's a point in time I still live in Darby. He leave quite brightly in to come and play with me. And the day later I find out, he didn't come to school as yet, but he was supposed to come out. He was telling everybody he was coming on Monday. And I was home and I was saying no. And I just see Three people get murdered in that, but I didn't think much of it because who I know was he? He was such a nice person. And I and I was saying no, I didn't know it was. And my cousin came and he was like, you know, they take Andre and them. And I was like, who Andre? He was like, Maggie, I said, nah. I wasn't shocked or the believe in it. Andre, he's always smiling. He never even nobody anything. He was, he was such a nice person. Andre, he always smiling, he always with friends. He, he was a very neat boy. He never used to come out, come out the time with no kind of thing. He would come, he would just sit down there quiet, quiet. He would say, Andre, what's wrong with you? He would say nothing. And you would just go along with the day. You always eating something. Well, I go and needed Andre for he needed them. They were just because Andre never used to do about nothing. He was. Andre, everybody, show everybody Andre used to talk to love. Andre, for he vibes, the kind of man he used to be doing. I don't think anybody was ready for to let go, Andre. Thank you.
At this point, we have a son of us specifically requested. I'm going to get just like I used to be. Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 9, Solomon writes, he says, Rejoice, O young man, in your youth. In chapter 12, at the very beginning, he says, Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come. The days when your soul will have no pleasure in them. Days before the mourners go about the streets and man goes to his long home. The days before the silver cord be loose or the pitcher be broken at the fountain or the wheel broken at the cistern or as we say in Trinidad, we kick the bucket. 
and our bodies return to the earth from which it came and our spirits return to God who gave it. And our souls would stand before God on the day of judgment to answer for the things done in this life, whether good or evil. He says, remember your creator in the days of your youth before those days come. In chapter 11, verse 9, he says, rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. And walk in the ways of your heart, and walk in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. In chapter 1 of Proverbs, Solomon speaking, he says, My son, listen carefully. Hear me good. Today, I didn't know these young men. I don't know you, their families, and their relatives. And I guess that has its own negatives. But today in particular, I'm glad that I didn't know them because I can speak freely. And I want to speak freely. Because I didn't know them, I can't speak about them. Because I don't know you, I can't speak about you either. But I want to speak to you. I want to speak to everybody who is paying attention to this service. All those who have joined us via the live stream and those who will join later on. Therefore remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. I read yesterday that our Prime Minister has announced that sometime soon there would be a national debate on crime. I'm not sure what a national debate means, but there would be some kind of discussion taking place nationally about the crime circumstances, about the crime situation in our land. I listen to the experts talk about crime. I listen to the criminologists talk about crime and violence and lawlessness. And I often hear them make reference to unemployment and underemployment and the need for social programs and activities to engage our young people so that they would stay away from a life of crime. Yet I read ever so often that people who hold well-paying jobs are held for crimes. And it blows my mind sometimes because I've read in the Bible where it says the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who could know it. And I, and, 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 and I realize we keep spinning top in mud. We keep doing the same things over and over, trying to find a solution to a problem, and we keep looking in the wrong place. Our problem with crime and violence is not a social issue. It's not an unemployment issue. It's an issue of the state of our hearts. And forgive me, but today we're reaping the whirlwind because over many years we have sown the wind. The Bible ca carries a principle in all aspects of our lives. What we sow as human beings, we will reap. And if we don't reap it in our lifetime, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren could be the ones to reap from what we have sown. We cry about the crime situation in our land. We complain about the lawlessness. 
Yet we drive down the road and we drop a KFC box out the car window in the middle of the street. Every time there's a flood, we complain. Yet we throw old stove and old fridge in the river. And we throw our garbage on the river bank. And somehow we don't expect the river courses to be flooded, to be blocked up when rain falls. But then we demand that they be cleaned and the drains be dredged. But we fill it back up right after. We fail to realize that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. We fail to realize when we teach our children from very early to curse the neighbor. And to wind down the place. Look, she, look, she, look how she can wind. Look how she can wind. We fail to understand the consequences that we are going to reap later on. We fail to understand when we point our boy children in certain directions uh, what we will produce later on down the road. Today, every criminal in this country used to be a little baby that was cute. And mommy and daddy and uncle and auntie and the neighbor used to play kuchiku and call them all kinds of and play with their cheeks and all kinds of things. Today, we fail to realize that many of us who know the ones around us who have the guns and we wouldn't say anything. Many of us are realizing those same guns are coming back to haunt us. Because long time it used to affect somebody in another village. Somebody we never met. And now it's coming home to us. And I'm not trying to say anything bad about your boys. That's why I said before I didn't know them. And I'm glad. So I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about us. Citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. Citizens of Trinidad and Tobago who cry every day we need to pray more. And in the same breath we say we need to pray more. We jump through our neighbor window when he leaves to go to work. In the same breath, we need to we say we need to pray more. We steal from the places that we work. In the same breath, we say we need to pray more because of the crime and the lawlessness and the violence in our land. We find every imaginable wrong thing to do against our neighbor. We have our unforgiveness and resentment and hurt. And we find ways to do harm to the people around us. Solomon says, son, listen to the words of your father and heed the instructions of your mother. Avoid those who would come to you and say, throw in your purse with us, come, let us lay wait to shed innocent blood. He says, what they don't realize is they are setting traps for themselves. Yes, I know there will be some pain between now and then. But what the Bible is saying is that they are going to be caught in their own mess somewhere down the road. You notice criminals don't live long. No, I'm not talking about these boys. Don't watch, don't watch I'm not talking about them. I'll tell you that early o'clock. But look around you. Criminals don't live long. Because God says there's a day and there's a time appointed when they will be cut off. And for those of you who might be feeling angry today and might be thinking, what can we do? How can we get back? How can we, how can we make somebody pay? How can we do something about this situation? I want to remind you, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. We have a cycle of violence in this country because somebody always has to do back somebody something for something that was done. And so the cycle never stops. Because as we get further and further in time, man becomes worse and worse, more and more wicked. And when they can't get you, they will take your family. It's hard. 
to lose a loved one. You've lost your sons and you've lost your grandsons and you've lost your boyfriend and you've lost your brother and you've lost your cousin and you've lost your nephew at somebody else's hand. But could you imagine for a moment what it's like to be the parent who would willingly give up your child to be killed? Think about it for a moment. You lost yours unwillingly. You lost yours surprisingly. You lost yours suddenly. Imagine for a moment a parent giving up his child deliberately. Knowing what he's about to go to. Knowing what he would have to endure. To lay down his life. So that somebody else could live. And for those of you probably wondering, what are you talking about? I'm talking about what the eternal God did for you and for me. In giving his son Jesus Christ to die for us so that we could have eternal life. This mess that we're experiencing here in Trinidad Tobago. This mess that we're experiencing all over the world. We said in the last few days, there have been X amount of mass shootings in the U.S. For this, for this year alone, there has been numerous mass shootings in the States. Every day somewhere in the world, there's some kind of wickedness taking place. Does it have to be? Should it be? It shouldn't have to be. But we make choices that not only affects us, but affects the people around us. All of us were born wicked. All of us were born in sin and shape in iniquity. And the consequences of sin eventually is eternal separation from God, death. But God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son to die for us that we could have eternal life. He willingly gave up his son. I heard the young lady say just now, who will I talk to now? Who will I call now? And I want to say this to each and every one of us. Don't be afraid to call Jesus. He's listening. He's paying attention. He hears. God tell you something. You replace them with somebody else to call. Eventually you have to replace them with somebody else to call too. And replace them with somebody else to call too. You have to have somebody that you could call on at any point in time. As a matter of fact, your best friend in your life, you can't call them anytime you want. Because there are times they wouldn't answer their phone. There are times they can't answer their phone. Because they're busy. Because they're sleeping. Because they're preoccupied. You have, must have somebody else you could call on and know that he's going to be listening to you. That is who Jesus Christ is. And when your life gets so fragile and so dismantled, like Sarah sang in her song, Angel, when you're lonely and you're desperately searching for release and you're desperately seeking for peace, you're not going to find it in the things around you and you're not going to find it in the people around you because they themselves searching for the same thing. You're going to find it in Jesus Christ. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. You can't find it in this world. There is nobody on this planet up to today who knows how to mend a broken heart. Only Jesus Christ could do it. Can somebody close that door for me, please? Only Jesus knows how to do that up to today. Your heart's broken. Your life's broken today. Shattered. He's the only one who can make it whole. You all remember the story of Humpty Dumpty that they taught us in school? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And all the king's horse and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again no matter how hard they tried. Humpty Dumpty is you and me. Humpty Dumpty is you and I going through our lives. Trying to take it easy and trying to observe all that's happening around us. But without a firm foundation to stand on, things will knock us over. 
storms of this life, the things that come against us will easily knock us over. And we are so fragile as human beings, it doesn't take much to break us. It doesn't take much to break us. A relationship gone sour. Loss of a job. Can't find the job you want. The salary not enough. The landlord decide I don't want you here no more. It doesn't take much to break us. But when we are broken, we scramble to find a way to make ourselves whole. And no matter how hard we try, we're unable to do it. We try everything that looks like glue, but it don't work. Because nothing is strong enough to put the pieces together and keep it together. So we keep running and we live the rest of our lives in pain and in agony. We live the rest of our lives hurting and in anguish. Longing to be made whole again but not being able, not knowing how to make that happen. And Jesus said, the spirit of God is upon me because he had anointed me to bind up the broken hearted. He is able to make you whole. That don't mean life ain't going to hurt. That don't mean life ain't going to pain. That don't mean there wouldn't be agony. And there wouldn't be days, weeks, months, sometimes even years of tears. But someone in scripture wrote that weeping and sorrow may endure for a night. But joy does come. In the morning. I hear the psalmist crying out. Out of his agony. God where are you? Why have you abandoned me? Crying out to you. And it's as though you're not paying attention. Not hearing me at all. But in the very same breath. He would say but in you. I will place my hope. Because you are my strength. You are my redeemer. You are my fortress. You are my help. Today I want to encourage you. I know you're hurting. And I don't know the pain that you experience. And I don't, I've never gone through what you're going through today. So I don't know your pain, but I know you're paining. And I know you're going to be paining for a long time. You ain't getting through this just so. There's never getting over this. And you're not going to get through it easily either. There will be days you wish it was you. There will be days you wish you wasn't here no more. There will be days you wish like Job that you weren't born at all. It is in those moments I want you to remember. That Jesus Christ binds up broken hearts. It is in those moments I want you to remember that you can hope in him. And you can find comfort and you can find peace in him. It is in those moments of loneliness when the memories begin to flood back. And want to sink you into the ground and you don't know what to do with yourself. It is in those moments I want you to remember. What the psalmist said in Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. And attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you and my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock. That's higher than I. You need something to cling to. You need something to hold on to. And that something is Jesus Christ. I urge you to grab onto him and to cling to him with dear life. Believe me, he'll be there for you. And he wouldn't abandon you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Are you helping me there? I have a new technician. All right, we're going to try him. What a friend we have in Jesus. If anybody has changed their minds or maybe you weren't here earlier and you want to come and pay tribute to any of these three young men or to all three of them, um, please feel free to join me here after this song and you will have your chance to speak.
have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. trials and temptations is there trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged get to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. As you just stand with me for a oh, moment. thank you, Lord. You were my solace, Jesus. Oh, what a friend we have, in Jesus. Sing it out, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Well, again, this is if you're comfortable doing it. Oh, what a friend we If you can hold the hand of the person next to you. Lord, some father's son took a gun and murdered these young men. Father, some mother's son or sons took a gun or guns and murdered these young men. We don't know why. We don't know the details. And right now, Father, that's besides the point. Because some father and some mothers are in pain today because their sons are no longer here. Grandparents, Lord, are in pain because their grandsons who are loving and cherished are no longer here. A brother, sister, girlfriend, a neighbor, a partner, a colleague, they're in pain today because their loved ones, their bodies lie before us. But no more can a conversation be held. No more can a lime be engaged in. 
No more can a piece of old talk pass between them. And these lives today, Father, are broken, shattered, torn to pieces. Some of them don't know how they're going to face the rest of today. They don't know how they're going to face the next few moments when that door on the side there opens. They don't know how they're going to face walking out of this building and going to a place where these young men lived and they won't be there anymore. They don't know, Father God, what tomorrow is going to be like when they can't make a phone call to or receive one from or a text message. When the conversations they put off for a later time can no longer take place. And their lives, Father God, seem ridiculous now and seems worthless because of the value that these three young men brought to their lives and the fact that they no longer hear that value seems to be gone. Father, we lift them before you today. Every family member, every relative, every friend, Every neighbor, every colleague, every classmate, mm -hmm. everyone that has been impacted, oh God, by the loss of these young men's lives. Lord, I heard it said during the eulogy that you call them. I ain't so sure about that. It was hinted that their time had come. I ain't too sure about that, Lord. Because just as a thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, so your word says the prince of darkness comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And evil men, Father God, are tools in the devil's hands. Yet it's not that the devil made them do it, but they chose. And today, these families are in pain because of what evil men have done. We ask you today, Father, collectively to bring them to justice. We ask you today, Father God, to corner them, to arrest them, and to convict them, Father God, of the pain that they've caused, of the pain they've inflicted, convict them of the wrong that they've done. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to expose them wherever they're hiding. Wherever they're hiding and somebody knows where they're hiding. God caused somebody to speak, to give the information. We have been choking our tails between our legs for too long and hiding, oh God, and our nation, our peoples, our sons and our daughters are being destroyed. Our husbands and wives are being destroyed. Our future husbands and wives are being eliminated. Our future generations are being wiped out. We pray today for justice. We ask you, Father God, to hear the cries of the blood of the innocent, crying out to you for justice, crying out to you for vengeance. Hear the voice of mothers and grandmothers and fathers crying out to you, God, for justice today. Your word says that you, 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 vengeance belongs to you, God. You will repay. And we ask you, God, to do it in Jesus' name. God, we're not even asking you to kill them. That's not what we're asking. We're asking you to bring them to justice, Lord. If the justice of the land can't deal with them, then we ask for divine justice. But God, we're tired. 
we're fed up. We're tired and we are fed up. We are a people that's bleeding. We are people, God, that are constantly in pain. Oh, God. And we ask you to go way back, Father God, not just now, not just these three, but the many lives that have been snuffed out in this nation, God. Because somebody decided, let's lay wait for innocent blood. Somebody said to somebody, throw in your purse with us. Let us all have one purse and let's go after them. Father, we pray that you would arrest them today. But we ask you to bind up the hearts of these Jamal, Andre, and Karen's loved ones, Lord. Bind up their broken hearts today, we pray. Help them, Father. Help them through this time. Walk with them through this season of grief and pain. Stand by them, Father. Help them. Show yourself merciful and gracious and strong on their behalf, we pray. Help them, Father. Hold them up. Strengthen them. Give them the grace that they need. Embrace their hearts. Give them peace, Father. Give them peace, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Is there anybody who wishes to come and say anything? Hi, I'm Mary Hugh. I say a special good day to each and every one of us. Here, I just want to say that and one from the twin, twins there was my granddaughter, school friend. Maybe the two of them, but I know him personally because the, the two of them used to be by me, liming with my grandchildren. And one day, I, the, my little grandson saw a goner on the bus route, and I told one from the twin there to catch it. And he just went in front of the goner and looked at the goner in his eyes and told his brother to stand in the back, and we, he caught that goner. And that goner is still alive in the tree because my big son said it's too young to kill. Right? And he, he let it go in the tree in the back of the house. So that corner is still living, and I'm so sorry to see how he died. But at this time, I just want to say, I want to quote a scripture there. It says, Micah chapter 6, verse 8 says, What doth the, the Lord require of us? Amen. What doth the Lord require of us? I'm speaking also to the bandits who shoot these little boys. He requires of us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before thy God. Right now, I want these bandits, whosoever shoot these children, to walk humbly and put down their guns. Just put it down, right? Because they could be killed in the same way by another gang, right? And... Each and every one of us, I just want to remind us how to walk. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 says, Let our feet be like hinds feet. You know what I'm speaking of? Hinds feet. When a goat is climbing in the mountain, you know, you have to be careful how they are walking. Right? They could slip easy and fall into the dish and, and, and get dead dead. Let us be very careful how we are walking today. Let us walk with Jesus Christ today at all times. Let us be equipped with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can remind us when we are going wrong. Because each and every one of us do make mistakes. Right? And we have to check on ourselves. Let us be able to study the scripture and to walk faithfully before thy God. 
let God, Jesus know that we are proof of him each and every day. When we wake up in the morning, let us say, thank you, Jesus, for this day. Let us tell him that we cannot walk without him. Amen? We have to be ready to hold his hand each step of the way. Do not walk without Jesus, because Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only light. Amen? Let us walk with Jesus Christ today. I am Mary Hugh, amen, of the AME Church, Emancipation. Amen? The AME Church, African Methodist Episcopal Church. Amen? Let us all be careful how we are walking today. Amen? Thank you. Bye. We're going to bring the service officially to a close. I'm going to open back the caskets so you can have the last few moments to view their bodies, to say a farewells. I want to remind you, I want to remind you, while you're viewing, while you're viewing their bodies, please do not touch their faces. Please do not. I know people have a thing about not letting your tears fall on the dead. Not from that standpoint, but don't let your tears fall on their faces also, all right? Um, I think that was explained earlier on. Um, so please, while you're viewing, do it, go ahead, cry, whatever you have to do. But try and avoid touching their faces, please, all right? If you have not yet, if you have not yet signed the condolence book, it's down at the black, down at the back. Please make sure and sign it. Please make sure and sign it before you leave. And um, may the Lord bless and keep each and every one of you. Um, Lift me up. Will be played shortly. Yeah. Yep. May the Lord bless and keep each and every one of you.
Yeah, what? We have some time, there's no need to rush. We have some time, so there's no need to rush. So we're getting crowded up between the caskets, that's causing some problems. The, do- the covers are falling and stuff. There's no need to rush, we could take our time and let one or two persons come in at a time. And then when they move out, somebody else could come in. There's no need to rush, we have time. All right?
that thou can help when earthly arms are failed. Lord, thou can save when deadly sin are sailed. Lord, O oh, thy church, no death, no hell prevailed. Grant us thy peace, Lord. Grant us thy help till foes are backward driven. Grant them thy truth, that they may be forgiven. Grant the peace on earth, and after we have striven, peace in thy heaven. Hello. Jehanam <laughs> Ge Multiply, now by them get divide. 
And a six feet them lie Some call it dreams Oh Lord But all I see is nightmares Head like fleas Oh Lord Cause the bloodshed like it endless If everybody walk on war one Tell me when the thing go done They try to make the thing look normal When they put another body down One more casket And fear if it talks to pass. Ha, <laughs> step up. To every youth, so they're dying. Your yeah, man, they don't know if I die by guns. I yeah. yeah. don't know if I'm on the list. I'm on this body's dance hall music. I yeah, don't know where so them sweet. kill your father. You don't know where them kill your father. Put your nose. I yeah. don't know where them kill your father. I don't know, I don't know where them kill your father. Janos Janos Hey, so you know, so you true friend gone When you turn till you can't stop ball Me out move when I yearn him call Big man I cry like girl The other day when my birthday passed Me and you a smoke and a drink and laugh Never did know at the last time we a sit down and flash Brother, me wish me could a see you now Me still have good advice for you now People tell me say life goes on But me still miss you in the hope Mama 
in stress When the many act my job and live one life No inspire the chance I hear Don't be boss no battle Telling many act Be hard and get you Listen to me tell you We need more love in the ghetto Sing some positive tune and set them get to you Match out and live one life less Funny just on it Don't be boss no bad Oh, tell him many act Be hard and get it It's so I'm in town We need more love in the ghetto Sing some positive tune And send them get to you
still see me crying alive for lucky thing, me heart strong. Yo, dark man, anytime I see them a fight, you know I got me called pal. Get a youth, we feel him loud. Ooh, I'm out of tears, see me crying alive for lucky thing, me heart strong. Up top, jump. Get a youth, we rich with the half things. Me tell you, me, I got rich, I'm a con. Strong brother, we fight the fight in our life. You are the name man there. No unity, no day again. We not share no umbrella. I just why life it can better. The amount of tears and me crying in life, a lucky thing me heart strong. Anytime when me see them a fight, they know I got me called bad. Get all you we feel in love. Me cry in life, I love you, think me heart strong. If I beg your garden from them Tell me what they my test me strength for. Like them want me feel let out the temper. Me never let the eagle on the big berita. Ah, uh, my granny said for you sleep and mark dead. So I'm not afraid. See I'm sorry, I sleep on last night, sleep on that today. The amount that tears in me cry in life, I love you, think me heart strong. Anytime I see them a fight, you know I got me called bad. Get a youth with me live long. Ooh, I'm out of tears and me crying a life. I love keeping me heart strong. Yeah, I zone. I've dreamt about my own death, which makes me appreciate life more. I've also had dreams about my own life, which makes me appreciate it more. Gone away, yeah. Gone away, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone away, yeah. Gone away. Feel 
Jesus and the ghost. to the cemetery Imagine the pain in my heart Last week one of my friend Perry All know me can't believe Ricky dead Can't believe Trevor dead Jeno eat my shot me head But what keep thanks for life instead Ladies and gentlemen in the next few minutes in the next few minutes we will be moving to inside so you, if you if you haven't yet paid your last respects and you want to do so, now would be the time. If there's anybody outside who you think may want to come in, please let them know. Um, they have just a few minutes to come in, pay their respects before we begin um, taking them inside. Thank you. Miss you so much Wonder sometimes if I will see you again Do you know what it's like? Cause I know what it really feels like When another gone to the mall Another to the cemetery Imagine the pain in my heart Last week one of my friend Barry All know me can't believe Ricky dead Can't believe Trevor dead Jen won't eat my shot me head But what keep thanks for life instead mm -hmm. Me wish you did day you are chill Cause right now I'm me and your brother a bill But life's just not the same Cause your memories really stain the lane Tears fall like rain, and when the sun comes, it's like it's shining vain. You look a son named Dean, said last night, him see you in a dream. I sing, Oh, 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 the judge and the pain, the grief, loved ones and the ghosts. Imagine the pain in my heart Last week one of my friend Barry All know me can't believe Ricky dead Can't believe Trevor dead Jen won't eat my shot me head But what keep thanks for life instead Jen mm -hmm. won't eat unfortunate Cause you never close to your fatty yet You was a good youth me can't forget But Jen won't best him at the architect now me hope that you rest in peace And me hope the pain and the stress will cease Pan your cup for me put the best in cheese The best in the West Indies I said, oh, 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 oh The knows The pain, the grief Loved ones and the goals Imagine the pain in my heart Last week one of my friend Barry All know me can't believe Ricky dead Can't believe Trevor dead Jen won't eat my shot me head But what keep thanks for life instead Miss you so much Wonder sometimes if I will see you again What it's like Cause I know what it really feels like When another gone to the mark Another to the cemetery Imagine the pain in my heart Last week one of my friend Barry All know me can't believe Ricky dead Can't believe Trevor dead Jen won't eat my shot me head But what keep thanks for life instead
Ladies and gentlemen, we have two minutes. We have two minutes remaining, and then we're going to begin moving inside. All right, so. Lord God Almighty, see wrong thine own, thine own grievous rolling. See how thy fold, the banners are unfolding. Lord, while the dots and form they are unholy, thou can preserve us. Lord, thou can help when earthly arms are failed. Lord, Thou can save when deadly sin are sinned. Lord, all oh, Thy church, no death, no hell prevailed. Grant us Thy peace, Lord. Grant us thy help till foes are backward driven. Grant them thy truth. Thy All right, folks, we are about to take Jamal. We are about to take Jamal in. So the attendants are going to come. Please cooperate with them. We know it's hard. We know this is difficult. We are Right. Please give the attendants some room they're coming in. Hello. 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 Jirmagarumadaunagi <laughs> Just give them some clearance, please. Jamal's casket is coming through. Please give them some clearance. Thank you. Didn't know today you would be your last. That I'd have Just to say goodbye to you so fast. 
I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door And tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I Please cooperate with us. Andre is being taken in. Andre is being taken in now. Please cooperate with us. We have to go. Again, we know it's difficult. Always made my troubles feel so small. And you were always there to catch me. The attendants are going the attendants are going to help you all just work with them So I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But on Just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah Hallelujah Please give them space to bring Karen through Please give them space to bring Karen through Please I'm give them space to allow Karen through. The angels around the throne Only God knows why I'm 
just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight Always made my troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me I'd fall in a world where heroes come and go, where God just took the only one I know. So I'll hold you as close as I can, longing for the day. When I see your face again But until then God must need another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah Just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight.